I am astrologer Kelly Castle, and this is your March 2023 astrology forecast. If you enjoy these monthly forecast videos, then make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever a new video is posted. And if you gain insight from today's video, hit the like button and share it with a friend. Let's spread the knowledge. So today is going to be a really fun session. I have a lot to show you because we have two huge transits this month, Saturn moving into Pisces and Pluto moving into Aquarius. So for the format of this show to give kind of everyone a little bit of, of something that they can understand and work with, the first part of the show, we're going to go over the overall themes for the month. And for this month, I'm going to add in a little extra history. We're going to look at at what other points in time did Saturn move into Pisces and Pluto into Aquarius? What was going on in, in the world? So that's going to be kind of fun. In part two, I'm going to actually show you the astrology. We're going to go through day by day and I'm going to show you the really important days to mark on your calendar to see how you feel on those days and what you actually notice in the world. Remember that astrology is a tool and it's something that you have to work with day by day and then actually notice it happening and learn how to feel it inside, feel what's going on in the collective energy. Um, so part two helps those of you who are starting to learn astrology for yourself, kind of learn the lingo, start learning what charts look like. Um, of course, marking the days on your calendar is important. And then just this last new little segment I've added in is journal prompts for the month that correspond to this month's themes. So quick announcement before we begin. Let me go over to my main screen here because today is going to be very interactive. I have my first courses that I'm offering. I'm super excited to be teaching my first two workshops. And as I mentioned in the intro, so many of my friends are starting to learn astrology, which is really cool, and human design. But just remember, for any of you that are doing human design, astrology is at the core of human design. And human design is very new. Not a lot of people have spent a significant amount of time playing with human design to go through the history, look at kind of the energies of, of how people feel it. It's, it's just not as widely researched yet as astrology. But astrology, we have thousands and thousands of years of, of research. So my recommendation for you human design people and people learning astrology is that you actually learn how to use these tools and utilize them in your life, which is exactly what we're going to do in these workshops. So let me just show you. If you go to my Instagram page and you click on my link, my link tree, I'll bring you here. Very first one, chart reading workshops. So if you are someone who has read your first astrology book, you kind of know the basics, um, you know what each of the zodiac signs mean in the houses, now it is time to actually utilize that knowledge to do astrology. It is a verb. Um, just like you play soccer, you play an instrument or music, it's doing. Um, so on Sunday, March 12th and 19th, at 2 p.m. Central Time, I'm going to be running two workshops on reading charts. The first weekend is how to synthesize the aspects of a natal birth chart. So like later in the show, when I show you this full chart, okay, let's pretend like this is the day someone is going to be born. Someone is going to be born here on March 1st. This is going to be their natal birth chart. This is going to be the core of their personality, their identity, their fears, their desires. This is the core of their being, who their soul chose to be. Most people might say, oh, I know what my sun sign is, my moon and my rising. But did you know that you were all of this? <laughs> you were all of these things. 
And when you start doing astrology, you have to be able to synthesize all of this into a life story to actually utilize this knowledge to help people. So that is what we are going to be learning how to do in these workshops. So the first one, we're going to concentrate on just synthesizing a natal birth chart that looks like this, what all this means, how to put it all together and read it. And then the second weekend, we're going to be working on reading transit charts. So let's say, for example, I pull up my chart, okay, and I put the current transits. How is what's going on out here affecting me in here? And the funny thing is some people have never actually seen this before. They, they don't actually know what a chart looks like. They've read the books. They've heard about the planets. Maybe they've pulled up on a website a list of some of their aspects, but they've never actually looked at it like this. So I'm going to explain um, and teach you guys how to actually read this and how to use it. And with the transit charts, this is all about how is what's going on the, in the world affecting me now. And this is where we as astrologers can make life predictions. And when you start getting really good at this stuff, I'm telling you, the predictions come true and you can give warnings to people. I mean, I give warnings to people all the time. I'm like, be really careful if you want to go party on this evening. Be really, really careful. And sometimes people don't heed my warnings and then they call me at 5 a.m. and they're like, I can't believe that what you said happened. Yeah, that's what this knowledge is for. It is learning how when you see something coming up, to take the high road. Remember, there is a higher and a lower perspective and path to each sign. In our evolution right now, this word ascending is very popular, rising up to the higher expression of whatever sign or characteristic you're talking about. So that is what this information is for, that if a challenge comes your way, an opportunity comes your way, you take the higher road, the higher perspective. So you can buy the bundle here for $50 together, or if you want to just start off doing one workshop or the other, you can buy one workshop at a time. I am doing these workshops live, which is going to be really fun, and I'm going to be giving away a free reading in each of the workshops if you come live. Um, one other thing I'm going to start doing is after actually teaching these workshops, I'm going to start running guided chart reading practice sessions. So these won't necessarily be me teaching you how to do something, but if you are starting to learn astrology, you're starting to learn how to do your chart, I'm going to essentially act like a guide as you do a reading of your own chart or perhaps a friend or a loved one. Um, and I will help point out to you what you're missing or a different way of looking at it um, so that we can all really start using these tools and learning together. It's way more fun together. So again, you can go to my Instagram page, hit the link tree, first one here, and it's right there. All information is there. I would love to see you live on March 12th. Okay, so let's jump into the themes for the month. And actually, you know what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to come back and pull up this transit chart. So here is March 1st. This is what we are, this is what we've got going on. Um, and I'm going to do this, this first part kind of in two segments. So just really quick here, basically March, we can divide into two sections, the beginning of the month and then the very end of the month when we move into Aries season. We are starting in Pisces season. It started off as a very magical Pisces season since we had very briefly um, the sun, Neptune and Venus all in Pisces for like two days but with what we've going on, we have going on in the charts right now, 
we have this magical Pisces energy with the sun and Neptune there. We also have this very egotistical energy with all the Aries energy that, that we have going on. A lot of us have this feeling like, I don't quite know what I want. Maybe there's one or two things I know what I want and I want it now. Aries wants things now. It is very stubborn. It just moves. It moves right away. It wants things now. It doesn't really think long term. Um, it just wants to get things going. It is the, the starter catalyst to the whole zodiac sign. Then you have Mars working its way through Gemini. I am so glad that this is going to be out of Gemini by the end of this month. It's been squaring all of my Pisces energy. It's driving my mind crazy. So Mars and Gemini makes your head kind of crazy. Gemini energy, it's that twin seeing both sides of things, your good side and your, your kind of bad side coming out. It rules the mind and it's squaring the Pisces energy. So there's the dreamy part of you wanting to go off into Neverland and then there's Mars in Gemini having you look at all the facts. It can make the mind a little crazy. Um, on top of that, we have everything finishing in Aquarius. We have Saturn finishing in Aquarius and uh, Mercury is here at the beginning of the month. So that's still kind of that stern energy saying like we're putting limitations on technology, on control systems. Things still feel very controlled and controlling. Um, so... There's just a lot of these like different personality traits that are wanting different things. This is one of the beautiful things that astrology can teach you about yourself is the different aspects of your personality that are fighting for your attention and where they want to put your intention. So don't be surprised if here at the beginning of this month, you still don't feel like you can see ahead very clearly. You can't see where everything is going to go. Um, right now, this month in particular, with all of the Aries and the Chiron in Aries, it would be a really good time to work on healing identity wounds. Um, it would be a really good month to practice self-control when Jupiter and Venus they are expanding there in Aries they're like I want to do it now but not everything is going to be possible to do right now so it'll be a good time to practice kind of pushing against that and practicing self-control with Pisces. Pisces loves flow state and to get into a flow state you have to have some structure around you. Like when I practice, for example, I practice at the same time every day. I have my routine. And then once I get in there, then I'm in this gorgeous flow state. Um, so getting into a flow state would be really healthy. Whereas um, getting on some emotional high, um, maybe going out and partying or something, or if you get even if you get really pumped up at some motivational event, but then you make some rash decision off of that emotional high, uh, there's just there's too much fog right now to really know how all of that is going to play out. There's too much instability. So um, and this is, I wrote this note down, talk to emotional authority types about this. This is one of the great things about human design are the authority types. I recommend learning yours if you don't know it already. Um, you can go on to like jovianarchive.com and look up your human design. Um, talk to emotional authorities about this, which I am one. You, we basically have to go through feeling the really high, the excitement of a decision. Then your brain goes and thinks, oh my God, these are all the things that could go wrong with this. And then you have to come back to neutral before making a decision. So it would be really a good time to practice going through that wave in making decisions this month. 
But luckily here at the beginning of the month, even, even as we're sitting in this kind of fog, discomfort, wanting, the moon is going to help balance us out because the moon through the first half of this month is going to be on the opposite side of the zodiac as pretty much the rest of the planets. We're, we're basically stacked on half of the zodiac sign, which is like half of the human experience. So the moon is going to help us remember these other sides of life, even though it's not going to be as prominent. Um, they're going to be reflecting to us from a different perspective. Like in cancer, for example, it would be like sitting down with your mom and having a discussion about what you're feeling in this moment. So that'll be good that it's going to help kind of balance this out. And then at the end of the month, that's going to be a good time to start making a decision, making decisions on things once the sun moves into Aries. Um, communication is going to move a lot faster too and there's going to be a few days in particular that are going to be really good to make moves, to start new projects, possibly sign new contracts, start new relationships, those sorts of things and we'll talk about that once we go into um, going through the days. So those are kind of like the overall themes for this month, but let's talk about the huge changes that we come, we have coming this month. Two huge changes. March 7th, we have Saturn here moving into Pisces. And then on March 23rd, I believe it is, we have Pluto moving into Aquarius. Now, these are big cycles, okay? Saturn is going to be in Pisces for three years. So this is the start of a three-year cycle. Pluto is going to be in Aquarius for 20 years. So we are going to see huge changes um, in these, these next two cycles. And what I want to remind you as well about these horoscope videos, making predictions, and, and the reason why I'm running these workshops is to help you understand that what we are looking at right now, this chart, this is Earth's perspective of the universe, of our solar system. This is where she's standing and what she's experiencing in this landscape. We are a tiny blip of her. I like to think that humans are actually a part of Earth. I like to think that we are part of her nervous system. We move energy around. We move information and ideas. And so the day that you were born is the snapshot, this, this thing, and that becomes your perspective. We're on her, we're on Earth, so we're still having the same perspective as her. Um, but that becomes you, your core. It, I mean, it would be so interesting. Like, we don't know when the Earth was truly created. So we can't go back and look at, I mean, we don't even know, like, what other planets were around when she was fully created. So there's a lot of unknowns <laughs> with this work, but... Um, with the information that we have, it shows so much and it really teaches us when we look at a daily horoscope, it teaches us how to feel the collective's experience. What is everyone on earth feeling and experiencing? Then you compare that to your soul being, which if you think of the word soul as sun, because that's if we translate S-O-U-L into S-O-L into sun, which that's where it comes from, the sun god. The sun is at the core of our universe. It's just like inside, basically our sacral, um, or I'm sorry, our solar plexus, right? Is the center, the sun, the core of our being. And your chart is at the core of your being. So when you're listening to a monthly horoscope, know that it applies to the collective experience then you have to learn how to apply this and see how it is hitting your chart. Because it would be like 
the person who was born on this day who had these characteristics, you're sitting in a room having a conversation and you're going to notice certain things about that person. You're going to have certain interactions between those two people. So that is what these transit charts show when we're looking at how is the collective affecting me. And to do that, you need to know your own chart. So that's why I always recommend either learn how to read your own charts, which is why I'm running these workshops, or come and do a reading with me and I'll, I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you what to look out for. Um, and different things. But let's talk about Saturn in Pisces and Pluto in Aquarius. This is really exciting. Um, Basically, once these two big shifts happen in this first month, especially because we have a a big new moon at zero degrees Aries, it's crazy. It's like literally telling us that this is starting a new cycle. We're going to get a little preview this month of some themes that will come up in the next three years. It's funny, even as I I was preparing for this this month, I even noticed that Vesta, which represents this flame of knowledge and wisdom, and it's like you have to keep the flame of your life going, your soul, your life force energy going, and it's even sitting in Aries, kind of helping, showing us that it's indicating we're starting this new flame off. Um... I want you to pay really close attention to what happens in the news and the world at large. What future technologies are people starting to talk about? What ideas are starting to be discussed? Because this is really just going to be the very beginning. But we'll pick up on themes. There will just be like little ideas dropped that we can say, ooh, I bet you we're going to see that come up again. So... Some of the things, let's start with Saturn and Pisces. And I'm actually going to show you kind of my notes and this list here of things we can look at. So some of the things that Pisces represents. Um, it represents water, religion, fish, which go in water. And that's the glyph of Pisces, the two fish, right? Mental health, mental health institutions, psychedelics, prison, the subconscious mind, um, this was funny, chemical engineers. I almost became a chemical engineer. I'm, I'm a triple Pisces. It also represents like music and the arts. So I chose the more musical artistic side as opposed to the math side, but I did almost become a chemical engineer and it's, it's escaping. So what we can think about with this, Saturn, let's, let's look at what is Saturn. Saturn is essentially control. It's limitations and boundaries, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like as we were talking about earlier, to get into a flow state, you actually do have to have some structure in place to get yourself there. (laughs) So boundaries and structure can be a good thing. I mean, it's like we and we are having this human experience because we have boundaries, because I have this hand that my hand isn't going to become water and just like fall to the table and then I don't have a hand anymore, right? So boundaries aren't a bad thing, but it also represents our control. And oftentimes what Saturn shows you in your own chart is where you put boundaries on yourself that can both help you, but also be areas where you really have to grow. You have to learn how to expand your boundaries Oftentimes because you are afraid that if you step beyond those boundaries that you're, you've set for yourself, which again, a lot of times it's made up in our mind that these boundaries will help us where actually if you take a different perspective on it, you can set up your boundaries in a different way that will help you grow. Um, but overall, Saturn, control, growing up, adulting, a much more harsher father figure um, than the the much more lighthearted, very sensitive Pisces. So whereas Saturn has been in a much more controlling sign, it's been at home in Aquarius for the last three years, it is going to move into the sign of new 
boundaries. And it is going to interact with and try and control these things that I just mentioned here. We've already started to see this. And we have to remember that with cycles, you there is a buildup to the cycle, there's the cycle itself, and then there are the after effects. There's a past, a present, and a future with all of this. So like with your Saturn return, there's a buildup to it. There's the period where it happens, and then there's the after effects. So we have already started to see psychedelics rise again. They they are coming of age in a new way. We have already started to hear, for example, with some of the bills that have been passed. They are, the governments right now are building new prisons. They want to put a lot of people in prison, for example, who haven't paid their taxes. Um, governments, control, Saturn represents governments, want to take over psychedelics. They want to start putting in place their own hospitals and institutions to study these things. Um, Can you imagine, like, this just sounds awful to me, but can you imagine having to go into, like, a sterilized white room with fluorescent lights and a person with a lab coat and a mask on to do a psychedelic journey? Like, to me, that sounds awful. To me, that sounds like the bad trip before you've even taken the psychedelics. So, there are going to be some... We're, we're going to really learn and explore what does our, where do we want to put controls on our connection to all people? Remember, Pisces being at the end of the journey, it does represent essentially the beginning of the end. It represents the end of the cycle, but it's also where we really do connect with everyone. Pisces are so sensitive because generally our veil between this world and the next is very thin. We're very intuitive. We're very empathic. We can feel everyone's energy. My birthday is on March 3rd, by the way. So my birthday is in a couple of days, depending on when you're watching this. And I'm a triple Pisces. I have my sun, my moon, and my Mercury. So I tell people as a Pisces, um, when I walk into a big room of people, I can feel everyone's energy. And oftentimes, like where I get caught up is I just want to give love. Like I'm very forgiving. Um, I love to give so I will overgive and at times that can get me in trouble um, because not everyone has those intentions not everyone is the super Pisces and can feel what I feel so oftentimes we want to invite people to have experiences like meditation for example or psychedelics or breath work playing an instrument um, finding that flow state where you get to experience what unconditional love means. Now, with Saturn coming into it, Saturn is going to want to control those experiences. Um, With water, for example, I would not be surprised if we start to see governments want to put boundaries and start taking over more of the ocean boundaries. We could see more controls come up about who owns water, who owns the clean water, um, who has control over who gets certain clean water. Um, I'm thinking of, yeah, I mean, even water represents the, the weather and the sky system. So we've seen a lot of crazy things with the weather and, and there is definitely good evidence out there that says that the governments are controlling the weather and controlling the water. So we could see that in these next couple of years. Um, for people who are on a spiritual journey already, Saturn and Pisces will help you uncover new layers. With some of those elements of control, if you can set up systems for yourself, for your practices, for example, 
you're going to be able to go in and dive deeper. For people who are not yet on a spiritual journey, haven't really explored it that much, or have let someone else take over that part of their life for them, or for these kids who are about to go through their Saturn return, um, your spiritual beliefs are really going to be challenged here in the next couple of years. Religion is going to hit an all-time high in the next couple of years because Pisces, again, represents the connection to God and source. Saturn wants to control your relationship to God and source. This is why Christianity and the big religions um, like Islam and Judaism have been so prominent in the last 2,000 years, literally from Christ's time till now. Um, We've been in the age of Pisces, and this was an age where religion controlled the majority of people's connection to God and source. Saturn said, and this this metaphorical Saturn, which remember it was Kronos who was the god of gods, like in the Titans before um, Zeus and his cohort came along. There's basically, for anyone who hasn't studied much mytholo- mythology or just doesn't really remember it, um, there were the Titans and then there was another level of gods that came along. So Saturn is a part of that first part, and Saturn was um, ultimately defeated by Zeus because he was too controlling. The the power became too much. He went on a power trip. And this is what's happened with religion. But with this energy, and I am sure, like the uppers and all these religious institutions I am sure they know astrology. Again, they have been hiding so many things from the public for so long, and they've been hiding all of these teachings and truths because they know it would put more power in the hands of the people, which they did not want. So we are going to see this whole new religious movement and a lot of people get into religion. I'm not saying that religion is bad. What I am asking for people to do is to ask lots of questions, to explore things for yourself. If it is serving you, keep doing it. If it's helping you get what you want, if it's helping you be healthier, if it's helping you keep a sounder mind, and you're doing it for yourself, you're not doing it to control others, to take from others, keep doing what you're doing. But if you're not getting what you want, what you want, if you're not healing, if you're not, um, it's putting too much control on your life, it's boxing you in too much, then ask some questions, go and explore other avenues. Um, so Saturn is going to be in Pisces until 2026. It is going to challenge us to look at where humans and humanity are all the same. And we'll look at that here in some examples of other times that Saturn has been here in Pisces. It's going to ask us, are these borders necessary? Remember, Saturn likes control, but Pisces likes no control. (laughs) Pisces likes no boundaries, no borders. So we're going to have to find a a happy medium. Um, With the rise of the psychedelics and even we've already seen this because Neptune has been in Pisces for I think it's like 13 years now. Um, All of this work about exploring the subconscious mind has already come up. This is very popular, a hot topic right now. So we're going to see more programs, more structures about how to do that. So again, I just invite you to explore different things. If one avenue is working for you, great. Keep doing it. Keep going. But if it's not, move on to something else. Um, Control of globalism is going to come up big time. So let's look at some examples of other times that Saturn was in Pisces because I found this really fascinating. So let me zoom in here a little bit so you can really see this. Okay, so if we go back 
to let's start here with the 35 to 1937 because we're going through a lot of similar energies right now with Uranus in Taurus um, this was the same period as the build-up to World War II which essentially now we are seeing the build-up to World War III so at this time Saturn was in Pisces opposing Neptune, which this is important to note because now we're in the flip of that. We are going to be in Saturn with Neptune and Neptune puts a veil on everything. This is, excuse me, also why I'm really cautioning people like with the religious stuff, with the subconscious mind stuff, with who you choose to do psychedelics with. Neptune puts a veil on it. It makes it very foggy. It makes it harder to discern, uh, especially with your logical mind, what is true and what is real, what is actually going to help you. So I really invite you, yes, do your research with the logical mind. That's a good first step. And also you are going to have to learn how to trust your gut to trust your own channeling and your own feelings, right? This has already been tested in the last three years of the number of people, for example, who went to take the thing, if you know what I'm talking about, who really didn't want to take the thing and just had a bad gut feeling about it. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people that are really sick now because of it. We're having to do damage control on that. So with anything that you explore in the next three years, really tune into your heart, to your your channeling abilities, essentially to see what is going to be right for you. Um, so back at this time, Saturn was opposing Neptune. So it was essentially... Um, Neptune was in Virgo at that time, which represents the physical body. So at that time, people would have been like, we weren't thinking about the subconscious mind in 1935. We were thinking about more about the physical health of people. Um, so that is where the subconscious mind was kind of fighting the, the physicality of the world at that time, whereas now everything is all about the subconscious mind. But if you even look here, um, this was the time period the U.S. New Deal came into place and mass shifts in population were set in motion by drought, floods, water and civil war okay civil war breaking a part of humanity where are the boundaries where do we all unite and come together um the next time period in the 60s this was the rise of the psycho psychedelic movement so now instead of neptune being there in Virgo, Pluto and Uranus were in Virgo. This was a huge, the hippie revolution, right? It's when all the hippies were all concerned about the food that we were eating and um, our, our the health of our physical bodies using natural things, right? Because when Pluto had been in Leo, kind of the 10 years prior, that was when suburbia grew. We can really track cultural changes with Pluto moving through the signs because it's basically like between 10 and 20 years. Aquarius is a little bit longer than normal. Usually it's like 10 to 13 years that Pluto sits in a sign. Um, but so this was the hippie movement was when Pluto was in Virgo. Um, and again, it was pushback against systems that encoded injustice racism, colonialism, sexism. So again, this is finding and, and seeing where, where are the people who are saying we are all different and then fighting against the people who are saying we are all the same. We all need to be thinking of our collective humanity as the same group of people, no matter what your race is, your gender is, your social status, your monetary status, etc. So we're going to see more of that uh, verbiage, that sort of propaganda all come up. So again, you need, because the subconscious mind is involved and the governments, the powers that be, the, the big companies, they are 
extremely talented marketers. They understand how the subconscious mind works. They understand how they can pull you into their messaging of what they want. So are you fully aware of what their true intentions are? Are they doing it and pulling you in really for their own gain when they really have no concern for you whatsoever? You're really going to have to use your discernment to know where you're putting your money, especially, and who you're hanging around with. Are the people that you are around, um, are they influencing you? In, in different ways. And then finally, this last time in the early 90s, um, Saturn was here when Uranus was conjunct Neptune. Um, so it says Saturn gave form to the new electronic world. Let's see where else. The push to open borders was part of the process of globalization, which was really interesting. We had the North American Free Trade Agreement. So again, breaking down the boundaries and the borders between countries. Um, also gave form to a new planetary nervous system. This was when email, these sorts of things. So really dissolving boundaries. Saturn will seek to try and control boundaries, but there absolutely will be dissolving of boundaries as well. So these were some of the interesting things. Um, the psychedelic movement to me was particularly interesting since we're seeing kind of a re-emergence of this. Um, and so this will really be something to, to look into here as this grows. Who really has control over those, um, those systems, those healing modalities, those plants, those sorts of things. Now, the, the next side of this, let me just pull my notes over here, is Pluto moving into Aquarius. So... Pluto Aquarius represents nuclear energy. It is aerospace, it's technology, it's science, it's forward thinking. But we also have to remember where Aquarius comes from. So it comes from Aquarius is called the the water bearer god and it was a god who could <clears throat> give life or take life. And it was concerned with the health of groups of people, which is why sometimes it would give it life and sometimes it was saying, oh, actually, this is too much. You need to kind of figure things out. So anytime Pluto has been in Aquarius, there have been huge revolutions. And I'm going to show you some of these examples. Um, we are already starting to see the nuclear and aerospace stuff come up with technology right now. I mean, there's huge technological innovations happening. Chat GPT, um, the aerospace stuff is huge. Like we're going to see insane revolutions in technology in the next 20 years. Um, in these next three years, it's, it's going to be interesting because we don't quite know what's going to happen like with world politics. But in the background, these technology innovations are going to happen. I think once we get past the next three years, then they're really going to explode. Then we'll really see who the new players are between now and then. I think it's just going to be a lot of experimenting. Um, but it, it rep Aquarius represents groups of people. Pluto is the transformer. It completely dissolves, it kills off, it dies off old systems that are no longer viable. It transforms and brings in something, births something completely new. It is the phoenix. Um, so in Aquarius, there are going to be revolutions about how we govern ourselves, how we govern groups of people. 
bringing the unconscious and hidden to life. It's Pluto is the god of the underworld. It's Hades. So it rules what is hidden in the back of our mind. So even with all of this space stuff, for example, and with all the subconscious work that's going on, um, again, who has your best interests in mind? Who is controlling your subconscious mind? Are you aware of your own subconscious mind? And this is really, Pluto has such a big effect and impact on in our chart, whatever house it is in. So I highly recommend go into your chart and see, okay, so for example, if this was the chart of this person, um, Aquarius is mostly here in the seventh house. So over these next 20 years, this person would go through huge changes in their relationships and how they partner with people in their friends over these next 20 years. For example, these last 20 years, they probably are these last like, uh, cause it was 2008, I believe when, when Pluto came into Capricorn. They probably went through a huge health journey, which I can relate. I My chart's really close to this. Mine's here at, at Cancer, Cancer Rising. So when Pluto was coming through my sixth house here in Capricorn, I went through a huge health journey. And now as it's been making its way through my seventh house, I literally went through this. I'm going through a huge journey and transformation in how I relate to others and how I form partnerships and how I relate to people. Um, so I highly recommend finding out where is Pluto in your chart? What is going to be transformed? Um, whereas when it was in Capricorn, for me, it was so much about business relationships. Now I think it's going to be how am I helping people with how the future is going to be shaped? Like, am I having an impact on people connecting in ways that's going to have an impact on the future? It's going to change flavors as it moves from Capricorn to Aquarius. We're going to start to see that here in the collective. So let me just show you. Let's see. Did I have? Okay, that's the psychedelic stuff. Um... Let's look at in history when Pluto came into Aquarius. Uh, so we can go back and like look at these really earlier ones, but I don't think as many of us um, like are, are as connected to this much older history. But if we look at the last two that were really important, uh, between 1532 and 1553, this was when Henry VIII um, said, I'm not following the Catholic Church anymore. He created the Church of England so that he could marry Anne Bolin. And he, you know, he created a whole new church. And this was a huge, huge deal at this time. Um because it then created these rifts with the Protestants and the Catholics. And at that time in history, religion ruled the world. This was also the time of the Protestant Reformation. So at this time, um, the revolution of this time period had to do with religion and everyone basically at that time was connected into these Christian religion systems. So it affected the whole world. It caused a lot of rifts, right? It created new border borders and boundaries. Um, and Neptune was in Aries at that time. So Aries is about getting what you want, <laughs> putting your, I, making this your identity. So then people identified as these specific different religions. Um, if we look at the most recent one, this was when the American Revolution happened in the late 1700s. This was also when Uranus was in Gemini. Again, wars come up big time with Uranus. The buildup is when it's going through Taurus, and then the wars happen when Uranus is in Gemini, which is exactly what's happening right now. Um, this is also when the French Revolution happened. So, Anytime Pluto in, comes into Aquarius, Aquarius is ruled by both Saturn and Uranus. 
And Uranus is the rebel. It's the revolutionary leader. It is the scientist. It is the planet and the element of ourself that is looking towards the future, that wants to do things in its own really unique way, wants to be the rebel. So we're going to see some big revolutions, some reformations in these next 20 years. And our globe, our systems have become so globalized. You know, at these times, there were still the individual countries ruling each other. So because everything is amplified now compared to what it was, we just, we can't, we we can't predict how all of this stuff is going to happen. And, and put on top of it that we're truly changing ages, we're coming out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. There's just, there is a lot of unknowns. We're going to have a lot of huge changes in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, One thing I will note, and this is where like as an astrologer, what I have to warn people about. um, So when we saw Saturn come into Capricorn, for example, What I warned is there's going to be some technology that comes out that's not going to be good for you. They're going to say it's going to be good if you all know what I'm talking about, but it's actually causing a lot more harm. And that was in the astrology. We saw that because of the Saturn and Uranus square at the time. That was back when Saturn was back over here. Square and Uranus. Uranus is the rebel. It shakes things up. It brings the unexpected. So that's a very unstable moment. In an unstable moment, you don't want to make a decision that could possibly affect the rest of your life when you don't have all of the information. This is the period that we're in now. People don't need to be making huge, possibly life-changing decisions until you have more of the information. And this is what astrology shows us. It shows us warnings. So one of the unfortunate parts about Pluto coming into Aquarius is every time it's made this shift, lots and lots of people die and pass away, which is what we are seeing right now for a number of reasons, not just the whole COVID thing, um, but for other reasons as well. And I have gone through so much death and learning to overcome grief in my own life. This is a subject that I can speak on now from my own experience of grieving the loss of so much Um, in the last couple of years that it's, you know, death isn't really discussed so much in our society anymore, but that is what Pluto represents and coming to terms with death. This is part of the spiritual work to understand that you are going to change throughout your life. You are going to evolve. The earth is evolving. We're evolving along with it. That comes change. That comes transformation. That becomes death and rebirth. Um, So it's something that we all really should be looking into more. Understanding. Understanding it from a spiritual perspective and learning how to, in a healthy way, disconnect from or release or work through the emotional side of death that can keep us held back, um, that can over-inflate certain situations. So just something to think about um, because I have seen a lot of people, I mean my Facebook feed like daily is just full of this person died and this person died and it just, just know that unfortunately every time Pluto comes into Aquarius that is a, a theme. Okay, so we've covered that. Let's go into the the days now. Um, I hope that this first section was helpful for this next sec- next section. I highly recommend having out your calendars and actually marking specific days on the calendars and learning to feel and to notice in the environment the things that I'm talking about. Feel it. How does it affect you personally? What are you seeing around? Okay, so 
the first couple of days of this month, we're going to start out with our emotions wanting one thing, but the reality being kind of unclear. So again, as I said earlier, don't just jump into dreamland. Um, on March 1st, we have this moon in Cancer and it is squaring Venus, Jupiter and Chiron and Aries, which will have kind of been building already. So this is just going to feel uncomfortable. Again, Aries wants things now. Cancer wants to feel comfortable. So we're going to have two parts of ourselves kind of going in, in opposite directions. We'll have to find a, a middle place. Then on March 2nd, we have this Mercury and Saturn conjunction and Venus and Jupiter conjuncting. So it'll be a very controlling day. Now that Saturn is at 29 degrees, Aquarians tend to have kind of an icy personality. It's like they're really cool and laid back. Um, I have a lot of Aquarius in me. There's just some days, it's funny, even with all my Pisces energy, when my Aquarius side is more out, I'm just really cool and emotionless and kind of just disconnected from things because my head is thinking ahead towards the future. So this is just a lot of very controlling energy. Really good day to practice self-control and also because of the amount of control, it's going to be a day that you kind of feel stuck and, and you're not going to be able to make big, big decisions. You're not going to be able to give someone an answer necessarily. Now, if we move forward a couple of days on March 7th, this is when Saturn officially moves into Pisces. So all those days that I just scrolled past, Saturn's going to be sitting at 29 degrees. That will be kind of intense. <laughs> just warning you, like the controlling aspect um, will, will be intense. Here, this is also a full moon day. I think the whole collective is going to feel this shift because this Saturn in Aquarius has been so intense the last couple of years. Um, I do actually think it's going to bring some relief. I'm actually quite excited for Saturn to come into Pisces. Um, so it moved in. I wrote down the date, March 22nd, 2022, which Again, that is literally right when COVID all started. So we are closing that chapter. Now we can see, right? Like everything is is back open again. The experiment did not work on the masses of people. Like it kind of went wrong, right? So um, it's going to be an, a start of a new experiment. New, I mean, I, I sure know. They're going to try and throw out new control systems for sure. Um, but it's going to be fighting that Pisces energy. Pisces doesn't want any boundaries. <laughs> so I'm excited about this day. Um, see how you feel. I wouldn't be surprised if between March 7th and 11th, we saw a big announcement from the governments about some new plan. Is it climate change? Is it about like the pipeline stuff that's been happening in the oceans? Is it war plans that have to do with the navies? I wouldn't be surprised at all if we saw some news about a submarine on one of these days. Um, again, it's, it's unveiling what is hidden. So just look out for those things. It'll be interesting to see what happens. As we come into the 9th and the 10th, Lilith has really been making herself known because she's sitting over here all by herself in Leo. Remember that Lilith is kind of the dark side of our personality, the dark side of the moon. She just wants to do whatever she wants, especially in Leo. Like Leo wants to be the king. So she wants to be the queen and go off and do whatever, does not care about what anyone thinks. Um, and it's going to be trining, meaning working with Venus over here. So, and even, <laughs> it was so interesting. This is a day, too, when Lucifer, yes, I'm talking like Lucifer joins Saturn. So your darkest desires could come out on one of these days, March 
ninth and 10th. See if you notice that kind of coming up in yourself on those days. As we move forward to March 15th and 16th, this will be another day to mark. This is when we have, okay, first this big conjunction, Neptune, the sun, and Mercury, all in Pisces. This is like ultra inflation of Pisces, dreamy, off escapism, never, never land energy. It is going to be squaring Mars exactly on this day. I have been dealing with this square now since this guy went retrograde back in October. It has been driving me crazy. I am not usually someone that deals with like mental health stuff, um, kind of episodes of depression, just like really my mind driving me crazy. And these last couple of months, as Mars has been squaring all of my Pisces energy, I have really been challenged with my mindset and my thoughts. So I am just putting out this warning from my own experience on these days. Be very, very careful about your mental health on March 15th and 16th. Really watch. If you need help, get help. Especially Jupiter's going to be right there with, with Chiron. Chiron represents a wound coming up. Lucifer is going to be in with Saturn, uh, putting some sort of control there. So just please be really careful on these days. We will have a little bit lighter energy on the 17th when Venus moves into Taurus. So that'll be kind of a nice relief. Generally, we can feel Venus because Venus is the part of us that wants things that make our our personal self feel good. It's like if you're a Cancer, you like a really comfy bed. Um, if you're a Gemini, maybe you like your stimulating like video games. Um, if you're a Capricorn, you'd prefer to sit and read a historical book or I don't know, study economic charts. <laughs> um, things like that. Pisces want to like watch a, um, like, I love sci-fi kind of quest sort of adventure movies, okay? We all have these things that make us feel good. Taurus is like they're really nice items and things. They like, like, high quality of everything. It's got to be high quality. So that will be a really nice day of, of a little adjustment. Now, on the 19th, Pay attention to how you feel because the moon meets Saturn on this day. And now even we have Icarus. Remember, Icarus is the boy who thought that he could fly to the sun with glue and feather wings. So it represents the part of ourselves that often thinks we can go and do something that's huge and we jump a little too soon. <laughs> so just on this day, be careful. Emotionally, you may be feeling like, oh my God, I can do it. I can do it. Uh, but actually I'm going to have to learn a big Saturnian lesson here that actually boundaries may be a healthy thing. So just pay attention to how you feel on March 19th. Then another really big day this month is this new moon at Aries. And I'll actually move back the hours here so we can see. Let's go back by five the exact spot of where it happened. Oops, I was going forward. Let's go backwards. Let's see here. Here we go. Let's go back one hour. Okay, boom. So Tuesday, March 21st at 11.45 a.m., we have this beautiful new moon in Aries. This is our first new moon. This is going to be like the start point um, because we have the sun. It will have just moved into Aries. We have the new moon here. We have Saturn finally in Pisces. So this is really going to be the day that kicks off this three-year cycle. So again, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is a really great month to utilize the 
Pisces, Neptunian channeling, feeling energy to do some self-healing work. So by March 21st, if you took that advice and you did some self-healing work, you should be feeling great going into spring and you should kind of feel a lightness and excitement about moving forward by this day. If you didn't, ah, you can kind of be wondering what's going to happen now. So this will be a really great day, though, if, if you have like set yourself up to kind of start anew and you're feeling good about it, you should feel really good on this day. I am very excited um, for this energy, especially because we'll start to feel the trine between Mars and Saturn. And when Mars and Saturn work together, they are very powerful. So that will be an exciting day. Um then this is where now okay by this day mercury is now ahead of the sun and it whenever the mercury is ahead of the sun especially in an individual chart it means that your mind is ahead of what you are putting out into the world what you're speaking so now that it's in Aries, communication is going to start to move faster. It's going to be much clearer. Um, this will be a good time, like if you're a podcaster, to start scheduling podcast interviews, important meetings. You're going to start to hear from people more, start getting new things going. This is when we're really going to feel this switch. Then, man, this month is just like boom, boom, boom with all these really big days, these big transits. On March 23rd, oops, let me go to days. Boom, Pluto moves into Aquarius, making an exact square to the moon. It comes and it hits zero degrees on this day, Taurus, a waxing moon, so a moon... It was dark. Now we're starting to see it again. It's starting to reveal itself. Again, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, start to watch for little things that show up, articles that spark your attention. You're like, oh, that's a new idea to start thinking about. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if on this day we hear an economy announcement from the Fed, something that has to do with money because we're going to have... Um, Kind of this build up here of this Taurus energy with, again, communication is going to start moving. And with Mars and Gemini here at 29 degrees, um, right at this time, we are going to be in the middle of the NBA March Madness. I wouldn't be surprised if something really crazy or weird happens with a game around one of these days. Because um, we've got, yeah, kind of this, mm -hmm, this square between Neptune and Mars. We've got this build up here. It just, it'll be really interesting to see what happens, to see what sorts of new big plans start getting revealed. <laughs> um, then March 25th, I'm so looking forward to this day. Mars moves into Cancer, so our kind of action energy will start to feel very different. It'll have a much more nurturing energy to it than uh, when it was in Gemini, and it was kind of making our minds go crazy. Then by March 28th, if you are, you've been thinking about like new projects and things and you've done your research, you've prepared and you're ready to make a bold move on something, if it feels right, again, we're coming out of Pisces season, we've got the Pisces energy there, this would be one of the days to do it. Um, you should expect the unexpected to happen <laughs> because Venus is, is with Uranus. It's like two degrees away here. Uh, but if you did your research, it would turn out well. So what I'm looking at the, in the astrology here is we have this big grand trine between Saturn and Pisces. 
the moon meeting with Mars trining over here to the south node. So this would be a day where, yeah, if it felt right, go for it. Also up here, Jupiter and Mercury. So it's like the, the fuel, the firepower behind your decisions would be there that day to make some sort of bold move. Then we finish the month here, let's see, with our first moon opposing Pluto, so earlier in this day, um, and it's going to reflect to us on this day what we've started to notice in the first couple of weeks of these new energies, this new energy with um, Pluto and Aquarius and Saturn and Pisces. This will be a very reflective day, even though it's not quite the, the full moon yet that we'll have here at the beginning of April. Um, this is definitely going to be a day at the end of the month to kind of reflect on what changes we're starting to see in the world. How is it affecting your you personally and your personal life? So those are the big days write them down and I'd love to know either in the comments, on Instagram, um, what did you notice throughout the month? What days stood out to you? What did you feel? Did you see any of this stuff happened? Um, the big things again that I mentioned, something really weird or strange happening during March Madness, uh, at the end of the month, some sort of big economy announcement from the Fed, Earlier in the month, um, some new war plans possibly involving the Navy, news about pipelines, a submarine. That really stood out. The, the submarine one, that'll be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, let's, let's see what happens this month. Now, the last part of these that I have started doing is journal prompts for the month. And I think I have two fun ones for this month. So the first one, I took these words from the human design wheel, which I will show you. So these are all the gates in the human design wheel. If you ha are doing gene keys at all too, these are all the gene keys. And if we look here at Pisces, we see that they are the words of freedom, meaning feeling abundance, feeling free, equality, truth, questioning what is really true for you, grace, and compassion during crisis. It's so interesting that that is the exact phrasing of compassion, because that's exactly what we're going through right now, right? And that's where Neptune is sitting. Um, so I want you to pick one of these words and write about what does this word feel like to you? How do you feel that in your body? Like with freedom, are you not feeling abundant in some way? Are you feeling resistance to it? Is there some work you need to do? Create some space to bring in more abundance, to feel more abundance? With equality, you can look at where Libra is in your chart. I like to think of equality actually as more of balance, having finding balance. With equality, you could also look at connection to people, understanding our humanity. So you could journal about what does it mean to you to be a human. Um, grace is the energy of essentially giving compassion to people, having an understanding for them. So you could choose one of those. And truth, this one has been coming up big for me lately, especially, okay, if we think about with all the Aquarius energy, with all the technology, and especially the uprising of chat GBT, asking the question, what is true? What do we want to be true? So with this, for example, if, if someone starts having chat GPT, write all of their articles. Are you connecting with that person energetically when you read that article? Or are you connecting with the computer and the program? And then how is that going to affect you? How is that going to affect the energy that you get out of it and then you put out into the world? How is that going to affect our connection with everything? So what is true for you? How 
do you discern truth? How are your discernment skills? What are the skills and tools you're using to discern what is true for you? Some things you can journal on. The second one that I'd invite you to journal on has to do with Chiron. Chiron is over here sitting in Aries in the gate of control and authority, which is all oh, so Saturnian. <laughs> like basically in my chart right now, Saturn is over everything. I am having so many Saturn lessons. It is so uncomfortable. Um, and in human design, this gate sits in the ego center. So you could ask the questions and journal about where are you trying to hold on to control in your life? Where do you perhaps are trying to control a little too much? Where can you let go? Are you happy with the ego shell that you are wearing? Your identity. That's what Aries is all about. It's about identifying I am this shell at this moment. It gets me these things. This is what I want. How attached are you to your identity? To controlling? Not enough. Somewhere in the middle. Having an identity crisis? <laughs> and finally, with that identity, you can't control what other people think of you or how they react to you. Are you okay with that? Do you perhaps need to work on some emotional intelligence skills and tools to deal with when someone has a reaction to you that you don't necessarily like, that makes you uncomfortable? How do you then respond and not react to that? So, there are your journal prompts for the month. I hope you enjoyed this session, this information that I have to offer. It, I, I get, I, I have so much fun preparing these charts and all of this information and sharing this with you. So I hope you get as much out of it as I do in preparing and delivering it to you. And I hope to see you in the workshops that I'm giving in March. Um, I'd love to see more people doing this work for themselves because it really is all about expanding your awareness of yourself of your connection to other people in the world, the world's consciousness at a given moment. And it's just, there's so much wisdom in it. And so I hope to teach it to you too, so you can do it for yourself. So if you enjoyed this, hit subscribe, hit like, leave comments with anything you learned, you saw, and I will see you next month. <laughs>